happy Tuesday. For writing today, you're going to need your pencil, highlighters, glue stick, writing notebook, and your green ELA resource folder that's inside of your anchor binder. Make sure that you're not taking your green folder out, but you're just opening it from your anchor binder. On the right-hand side, you're going to be taking out several teach pages today. You're going to take out the small sheet that says sentences, the next two that simple sentences, and there's some um, examples that we'll be talking about. Then you're gonna take out the one that says compound sentences, and then the next two that have um, information about our coordinating conjunctions. So those are the fanboys that we talked about before for our um, fixing run-on sentences, and then the examples for that. Take out all the teach pages until you get to what looks like a hamburger, and then make sure that stays in for another day. Then close up that green resource notebook, make sure that it's in your binder still, and then place it back in your basket. We're gonna go ahead back to our notebook, and um, before you started your video today, you should have checked the classwork. That was posted for the answer key for our run-on sentences. Run on sentences yesterday were ways that we were fixing when information, we had too much of it and we needed to separate it either into two smaller simple sentences or continue with it to be a complex or compound sentence by adding one of our conjunctions, which is one of the words that is used in the um, acronym FANBOYS. So we're gonna continue with our practicing of sentences. Um, we're gonna go ahead and turn our page and the first page for today's lesson is going to be the next page on page 20. So we're gonna turn back to our table of contents. Remember at any time you can pause your video so you can get yourself organized and um, caught up and then push play when you're ready to continue. So today on page 20, we're going to be talking about simple and compound sentences. And then today's date is 9-15-20. And as we just kind of um, reviewed, we have been discussing different types of sentences. Um, so our intention behind our statements, our questions, um, being bossy, or saying something with a lot of emotion. What makes a complete sentence in those three characteristics, capital letter, punctuation mark, and that it has a subject and predicate. When we're given a fragment, that's when we have missing information. So either the subject's missing, the um, predicate's missing, so the who or the what. Run on, we said, was when we're given too much information to be in one complete sentence. So we have to do some fix-up work with it. And today we're going to be talking about the difference between those simple sentences and how to create a compound sentence, um, which is what we're trying to go for in our fourth grade writing. So we're gonna go ahead and turn back to page 20 where we had just put the page. We're gonna glue in our teach pages first and then we'll go back and actually talk about what's there. So make sure that you're looking closely and following directions um, because we have quite a few things to glue in so I want you to glue them in correctly. The first thing we're gonna glue in is the small teach page. It just starts with the word sentences. So we're gonna turn that over, put the glue stick on the back and then you may smooth that down. On the right side, we're going to be working with the next two, so make sure you listen which one needs to be glued down and which one's gonna be a flip book. So for this next side, we're going to go ahead and cut, and we're gonna cut a piece of this off, and we're gonna use it in a minute. So we're gonna cut on the dotted lines, and at the top, the right flap, we're going to actually cut and leave separate because we're gonna use that when it's time to do the work. And then you can use your glue stick and we're going to glue the remaining portion on your actual notebook page. So you can go ahead and glue that straight down on your page. Then the side that um, has the simple sentences title, you're going to use your scissors and you're going to cut along the dotted lines to make your two doors for information. Turn that over and you're going to use your glue stick for the top section only. And then you're gonna glue up right on top where it says cut, match, and glue under the correct flap.
So we have right now a teach page on the left that says sentences. On the right, we're going to be placing our flip book that we're gonna create um, simple sentences using information that we just kind of tucked away. When you turn your page, you're gonna continue by adding the next page, which is called compound sentences. So use your glue stick once again. Go ahead and make your frame. Turn it back over and smooth it down. And the last two um, we're going to be doing is the one that has the examples is with the page that we glue down first on the right. So use your glue stick. Then turn it over, smooth it down. And the next part is our last part that we're gonna be using our scissors for. So for this, I'm going to just um, make this a little neater. I'm gonna cut off some of this extra white space and that's just gonna help with when I glue it down, I'm gonna be able to accurately place it on the correct spots. So you might wanna do the same. And then for the doors, I'm going to be cutting along the bold black line that's separating the letters and the words for fanboys. Be very mindful that you do not cut past this um, vertical line that's going to separate it from our title. So go ahead and do that real quick with your scissors. You can always come back and color in those bubble letters of the word fanboy after we're finished with our lesson today. Once you're done, you're going to turn it over and along that vertical strip, you're gonna be placing a strip of the glue stick. Turn it over and make sure that it lines up right over um, the place on the example side. That way when we are talking about our different examples of when we use our conjunctions, um, they're lining up to the correct example. All right, we're gonna go ahead and turn back to our previous pages where we're talking about simple sentences. Um, before we start focusing just on simple sentences, we're gonna be focusing on the two different types. So as we said, we're going to be looking at the difference between when we can write a simplistic sentence, so um, with just a little bit of information compared to what it's called with a more complex um, amount of information. So it says every sentence has two main parts. We said the subject and the predicate. So we're gonna remind ourselves that the subject is the who in the sentence and the predicate is what the subject is doing. So I'm just tucking in those little reminders for ourselves. The next part is our differentiating between um, what we're doing. So the first thing that we're going to be focusing on is what we said was a simple sentence. So use a second color to highlight. A simple sentence is what we call an independent clause. An independent clause, we need to know what that actually means because they will have places where they identify. So it says independent clause, just like Rudolph and Hermie, it stands alone. So it, and it has only one of each, one subject and one predicate. So we need to make sure that we highlight one of each. So a sentence, one sentence that has one predicate and one subject is considered a simple sentence. So we're going to show some examples to have a better understanding of what that means. So I'm gonna use my highlighter and just remind myself that this is identifying simple sentences. So it says, what is a complete subject and then complete predicate? So on the first door, it says who or what is doing something. So we can open up our little flap and fold it nicely. And we can see that they're giving us the complete subject or the who the sentence is going to be about. Our job is to then determine what is the subject doing by looking at the choices they have given us and we're going to cut and glue the ones that we think are the best ideas. So you can take a moment, pause the video, um, do not glue them down yet. You are going to cut them like Mrs. Ling is doing right now. You're going to just place them by the sentence or by the subject that you think that they might go with and before you glue them down, I want you to push pause and then, um, then you can push play and check. So you should have pushed pause and try to um, 
find the correct predicate that goes with the complete subject. So the first one was the red bookshelf. So we should have found the complete predicate was old and messy. So now you may use your glue stick. Put a little bit of glue stick on the back. And then you may go ahead and now put it down next to the complete subject it belonged to. The next one that we had, the complete subject, was the boys and girls, and you should have found the complete predicate went outside to play. So once again, use your glue stick. Go ahead and put some glue stick on the back of that one, and then glue it down right next to that complete subject. The third one is the playful puppy. The complete predicate that you should find is chewed on the shoes. So turn over that predicate. And then go ahead and glue it down. The fourth one is the quiet children. And we should have found the one that said finish their work or finish their work in quickly. And then go ahead and glue that one down next. Then the fifth one, the fluffy kitten, we should have look like a ball of fur. So use your glue stick, place it down next to the complete subject, which means the last one should go with the last one. All of the robot, robots were trained to do homework. So go ahead and get that one glued down next. So we were able to identify which of the complete predicates should be attached to the complete subject given. So you may then go ahead and put down your flaps um, and we're going to move on. Just remember the simple sentence has one subject and one predicate. That's why it's called a simple sentence. So now we're gonna be looking at our compound, compound sentences. So we're going to go ahead and highlight the words compound sentence. Sometimes we hear complex sentences um, instead of compound. So you should be thinking back about when you heard the word compound before um, you learned how to formulate compound words where you were using two smaller words separately and joining them together to give a new meaning. So you could have thought of the word sun and then flower and together those two words um, would then make sunflower. So we have the same idea today talking about our compound sentences. So it says a compound sentence is two or more independent clauses. So that's two separate sentences joined with a coordinating conjunction. So we're going to go ahead and under, or I'm sorry, highlight compound sentence. And then where it says two or more independent clauses. The other part that needs to be highlighted, I'm using a third color, is join and then conjunction. So that is where we're going to be talking about fanboys. So we can even write fanboys as that reminder. So we can see coordinating conjunctions for and nor, but or yet so. So those are the letters of the word fanboys will help us with that reminder. It says circle the coordinating conjunctions in these compound sentences. So we're looking for the conjunction, one of the words that create fanboy in the sentences that they provided us. So it says dogs bark, comma, but cats meow. So looking at our coordinating conjunctions, we should be circling the word but. The second one, it says the children worked hard so they did well on the test. The coordinating conjunction is the word so, it was right after the comma. So we have one clause or one simple sentence, the children worked hard, so subject, predicate. So they did well on the test, so subject, predicate. So it has two subjects, two predicates. The next part it says the team played hard and they and they fans cheered. It should say, and their fans cheered. So let's just fix that real quick. So it sounds better. The team played hard and their fans cheered. So we should be circling the conjunction and because it's joining together two simple sentences. So it has a subject and a predicate, subject and a predicate. So now we're gonna be looking at some more examples of when each of these specific conjunctions were used. So I'm gonna use a color just to highlight the title that goes along 
the side of my new flip book. And then you can use your lighter color to um, highlight once we go inside. So for the first conjunction is the word four. We're gonna find the word four and then highlight it. So it says, they enjoy going to the park. I'm using my color to highlight the conjunction. Four, it was a beautiful day. Pay close attention that it has a comma that goes before the conjunction. The second one using the conjunction and, the example is, let me move it over a little. The children did clean the house and they completed their homework. So we need to go back and look at that. The children cleaned the house and completed their homework. So there's is a few typos. So go ahead and cross out that word did so it sounds correct. The children cleaned the house and is the conjunction we're gonna use. The next conjunction is the word nor. So we're gonna open it up and read the sentence. She could not play outside, nor could she play indoors. So we're gonna highlight the conjunction. And remember that it has two separate clauses. So these are independent on their own, meaning they're sentences by themselves. We are connecting them using a conjunction. So they have a subject and a predicate, subject and a predicate. The next conjunction is the word but. So we have, we wanted to go outside, but it was raining. So we have a subject and the predicate, we have the conjunction to join it to the next subject is it, and then the predicate was raining. The next conjunction is the word or. So we have the sentence, you can do your homework now, or you can do it after supper. So subject is you, predicate is can do your homework now. Then we have our conjunction or, followed by the second subject of you, and then the second predicate can do it after supper. The next one is the word yet. You would like to buy yourself some candy, yet you have no money. So once again, we have two separate subjects and two separate predicates. We have them separated with a comma and a conjunction. And the last coordinating conjunction is the word so. He studied for his test, so he made a good grade. So we look for the comma, the conjunction and it separates the two independent clauses. Today you were just asked to take pictures of your completed practice pages for both the simple, simple sentences and for the compound sentences. And then you can submit those to your assignment today.